哈！What a magnificent fish. Well, this is it, Ibrook. Opening day, the long awaited event. We've been waiting for a couple of months for this now since we've heard that Ibrook was going to open to pike fishing. This, of course, is quite a famous trout water and a very good one at that, located quite near to uh, Rutland. Uh, so it's in the right neck of the woods for trouting, but it's not trout that we're here for. We're actually here for pike and perch because it is known that Ibrook contains some very, very big predatory fish. And there could be monsters here. We just don't know because it hasn't been predator fish much. So some of the great and the good and the bad of predator fishing are here today. Quite a lot of the bad, in fact. And um, they've all dashed down here. Some of them, I'm told, were here at half past five, even though the boats weren't allowed to go out till half past eight. But there were those among us who were a little bit more leisurely and here to enjoy the day and in reality for me that's what it's all about i love catching predatory fish but i just want to enjoy the occasion great conditions overcast nice light ripple not too hot i fancy the water's a little bit warm and um, the key will be to find the depth range that the pike are in um, they could well be in deep water. When the water gets really warm in the middle of the summer, pike find that quite uncomfortable. And on these big reservoirs, you get a phenomenon known as the thermocline. And basically it's a separation of warmer and colder water. The warm water comes up to the surface, the cold water sinks to the bottom. And in my experience, if it's been too warm, the fish will lie below the thermocline until the water is comfortable enough uh, temperature wise for them to move back into the shallow so it's a bit of a guessing game everybody's fencing around at the moment making different drifts and trying to keep their secrets from everybody else but eventually a pattern will emerge pike hopefully will get caught and then you'll find probably 10 boats all fishing inside about 100 square yards that's the way it goes What we're going to do now is to try fishing the deep water. We've fished the shallows. We've started off in about five or six feet. There's a lot of weed there. But my suspicion is that this water is too warm for the pike to be comfortable in the shallows. And I think we've got to experiment with fishing the deep water. Now, this thermocline business with pike is actually quite important because what happens is you get a layer of warm water at the top and then below that you get a thing called the thermocline and below that sits the cold water which throughout the year is a regular four degrees. So my suspicion is that the pike will be sitting probably just underneath the thermocline in a temperature that they find comfortable. When they want to feed of course then they can go on the hunt and they can come up through the water. 
I think when they're not actively feeding, they'll be sitting somewhere nice and quiet, fairly dark, where the water's just to their liking. So this is a bit like a needle in a haystack, but I'm convinced that if we can find the depth that the pike are actually lying in, that will be the key to catching hopefully several fish. So it's a bit feast and famine this game. I'm just looking around, I haven't seen anybody catch a pike yet. Somebody's probably had one, but it's, it's not exactly uh, producing lots of fish. So let's try a little bit of deeper water. Now what we've got, we've got 20 feet here, dropping away to about 28. So we'll give this a go. And then the deepest part of the reservoir is down there. So we're gonna systematically work over into deep water. This is Richard's fish, not mine, but it's a pike of about 16 pounds, <laughs> built like a breeze bark, classic trout water fish, small head, wide back, deep, very beautiful, very, very beautiful. Well done, Rich. Magnificent fish, classic trout water pike. First hookup of the day, and I think this one's going to fly. It's already been up on the surface. quite interesting the winds actually picked up a little bit and I think it's brought the fish on a little bit of extra disturbance the fish is under the boat now almost under the rod tip box here it comes Unhooking pike is always a bit of an issue, but if you use either light barbs or barbless hooks, it's usually not too bad. It's a nice fish. Probably about the same size as Richard's, I would think 16, 17 pounds. Very aggressive. Very nice. Wow! Hey. <laughs> that was really exciting. I saw the fish come racing in after my lure. I just hung it under the boat and boom! That was fantastic. I don't think this one's especially well hooked because it took right under the boat. Uh, there it is. Yeah, very nice. Oh, he's, he's spat it now. Well, we've actually discovered something really interesting, but don't tell me at the boats, because I think the reason that we're actually getting takes rather than just fish following in, which is what seems to be happening to everyone else, 
is we're moving our lures twice as fast as anyone else. We're actually cranking them very high in the water at high speed. And you remember just a few moments ago, I said to you, there's always a key with these places. And on this place today, definitely moving the lure at high speed seems to be the thing to do. Now, psychologically, when you get a, a follow or a fish attack your lure, your natural instinct is to freeze and to slow it down to let the fish catch it. But believe me, we can't wind fast enough for these pike at the moment. And we certainly can't wind fast enough to stop them taking the lure. If they want it, they'll come and get it. And sometimes speeding up is the answer, not slowing down. Anyway, mum's the word. A perch, look at that. Whoa, it's a nice perch, too. Look at this on a jerk bait. Oh, it's, it's a nice one. I can hand it out, probably. Rich, look at this. It's not often you get one of them on a jerk bait. Whoa, look at that. What a magnificent fish! Ooh. Well, I'm over the moon with that. That's a super perch, it's over three pounds and it's taken a great big jerk bait. And let me tell you, I've caught lots of big perch on really big lures over the years. Too many for it to be coincidence. What a beautiful fish. Look at that, fish of the day, fish of the day.